Hey everybody, welcome back to Since the ECU Says, hosted by Shaggy Dome Martial Arts. Today's Wednesday, and as I promised, we're going to be working on something a little bit fun. So today we're going to be working on nunchucks. So, uh, before we start, I'm just going to show you guys. Uh, in New York State, they recently changed the law so that the average person can carry nunchucks. Uh, or nunchaku or chukka sticks or whatever the state wants to call them. In Okinawa, these are called nunchaku. Um, but most people know them as nunchucks. Now, I, I don't know about other state laws, but just so you, uh, if you do live in New York State, just so you know, uh, as I said, they recently changed the law so that you can own these again. Um, and basically, uh, I still wouldn't walk around carrying them because it seems kind of silly. But the whole point of using a nunchuck as a uh, martial arts weapon is to learn coordination. All right, so we're going to do some stuff with this, but first, if you don't have a pair of these, make it real simple. Just take an old belt, and what you're going to do is you're going to tie, uh, I took some rubber bands and just put it on there. You want the middle part, if you were hanging it down, so that it wraps around your hand, right? So you would want both pieces to be in the middle of your hand. So you can adjust how many uh, folds you put in your belt and, and that kind of stuff. But this is just folded twice with some rubber bands on there. And really, it's gonna be all you need to get your nunchucks working, okay? So, if you don't have a pair, you can do something like this. And that way, if you hit something, or a person, or yourself, it's not really gonna hurt, okay? Uh, if you have a couple pairs, right? So I happen to have a pair of wood ones. Uh, I use these sometimes when I'm training. Uh, generally, when I'm teaching, I always go with the foam ones just because if somebody walks in front of me, uh, like a dog, a kid, a friend, whatever, these are much less likely to do damage. Um, the other common thing with, with nunchucks is a lot of times they have strings, okay, and it's just a, uh, a plastic tube and it's tied to the plastic tube. So my suggestion is before you start training with these, kind of roll back the foam a little bit and take a look at the quality of that string and the condition of that string. Really, it's just a, a piece of paracord, um, but the more that these spin around, the more uh, the strings tend to fray, which is why I switched to a pair with chains in it. Um, so, <clears throat> nunchucks have, uh, I, I guess, a, uh, a flavorful history. Generally, they were used, the, the farming implement uh, story that is generally accepted is that you would use them to separate the wheat from the chaff. They take a, they have a big rice mat. They put the the raw rice from the field. They put it on the mat, and then they'd sit there and hit the mat to crush the uh, um, the seeds apart and break that little chaff, that paper covering, uh, like the paper on the inside of a peanut. All right. Uh, then what they do is they toss it up in the air and the wind would help blow the, the paper stuff away and the heavier rice would fall back onto the mat. Um, as I said, that's a story. I've never farmed with these things. There's much better tools nowadays, so uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on that. But these are a traditional karate weapon and honestly, I love them for hand-eye coordination. I teach my kids uh, how to use nunchucks uh, starting young just because of the, the benefits in hand-eye coordination. So we're gonna start off with some easy stuff. The first one we're gonna do is having them closed, okay? Um, we're gonna go through some basics. If I have them closed, I can hold them right at the end or I can hold them down here. Generally, I'm gonna hold them down here so that I can use it more as a striking weapon rather than up here where it's more of like a um, blocking weapon. So nice and easy, it's just gonna, we're gonna do some punches. So keeping them in a nice tight closed grip, it's gonna be punched. You can put your finger out to help guide it to where you want it to be, but we're gonna do a couple with cadence. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. With a key high. Ready? Itch, knee, sun, <coughs> she, go. Good. All right, as I said, so I can use these as a block. So we're going to, if I have them closed, I can come swing them down, down block, swing it across, side block, swing it up, head block. Now with the side block, it's going to be a lot like my side, using side, where I want it to be strong here. My hand's going to be a little bit lower 
right? Because this is the part that's doing the blocking. That gives the ability to when you're doing a block and it's striking somebody on the forearm and stuff like that, um, it's going to do more damage than my arm will. Same thing. The head block is going to come here. This is the part I'm blocking with. It's the same effective position as if I was doing an open hand head block, but my hand moves off to the side so I can block with the, the nunchucks. These things are hard. All right? If I'm doing them with my wooden ones here, if I smash somebody across the forearm to, with the stick here, it's going to it's going to really hurt, right? So, head blocks, side blocks, down blocks. Just keep practicing those while I'm talking here. So, you can't obviously, as I said, walk around with nunchucks. It's clear that you don't really have them on you for any other reason than being a weapon, right? And I always suggest not doing that. Uh, personally, I carry a pocket knife, but I don't think I could ever tell you a time where I've used my pocket knife as a weapon. Of course I could if I needed to, but it's there more for, um, you know, the tool aspect of it. I cut strings, I cut tape, I cut boxes, I open things, I, um, you know, I use it as a pry bar even though I shouldn't, you know, but I bought a, a sturdy knife with an extra lock so that I can make sure that I can do that without hurting myself, right? But, uh, you know, nunchucks don't have that utility. I can't open a box with a pair of nunchucks, not cleanly, not without breaking everything inside it, right? But these are great to practice with because they build that hand-eye coordination. And along with the fact that I could use my belt, you know, the, the qualities of a nunchuck that we'll get to in a second with them open is literally no different than just having the weight on the end of a string, right? So if I've got a, a stick and a string attached to each other, Doing uh, my nunchuck skills basically is going to be the same exact techniques I would use. Okay, um, but I'll get more into that in a minute. Uh, the other thing we can do is our strikes. So we can come in, strike with the as a side to the ribs, to the quad, backhands, right. So practice those back and forth, across. Now with my Nunchucks, I want to go for the, I want to, best targets for me are going to be joints. Elbows, wrists, jaw, uh, and obviously the rib cage, because that always uh, likes having a stick stuck in there, right? Um, things like your knees are going to be fantastic targets, elbows, the collarbone, things that uh, are already hard on the other person. So it's striking a hard object with a hard object. That's going to cause a lot of damage to them. Right? So if I'm coming across, I'm going to go with the knees. I'm going to come to the ribs, the jaw. All right? I can come down on the collarbone. And the other one you can think of here is I've got this nice pommel strike, right? So on the if I do more of a hammer fist here, I can come across the jaw, to the ribs, to the knee or the inside of the quad. All right, and I can also strike pressure points because it's a smaller point, All right? So now I can come to the inside of the arm. I can come to the inside of the leg. I can come to the, the brachial plexus right here on the side of your neck um, and do some concentrated damage there. Now for the part that everybody wants to do, everybody thinks about, okay, is opening them up. So if what we're gonna start nice and easy. Basically all you wanna do is hold your nunchuck open so that your thumb is towards the string or the chain and it finds a balance point, okay? If you're doing it with the rope, you might not find a happy balance point, right? But what you want is to get as close as you can, okay? This is balancing on the fact that this is a rubber band. It might not work if it's a string, but you wanna basically put the, the uh, inside knuckle of your finger your pointer finger here right on the edge of that rubber band or string or whatever you're tying it with because that is your pivot point all right same thing for this now mine has this you can see i've used these a bit there's been a gap that's uh been created here that my fingers just kind of normally fall into so if with that we're going to start nice and easy we're just going to start with circles the majority of the use of nunchucks is 
dealing with the recoil caused by hitting something. Um, so there's a lot of circles and a lot of figure eights, and really most of that is just dealing with recoil, okay? So if I have circles going one way, circles going the other, and I go back and forth, right? Eventually they just turn into figure eights. So I do a circle on this side and a circle on this side, and I'm gonna try to keep them small. Now I can also make them big, right? If I start with them big, I'm gonna make a huge X in the sky, all right? And then I'm gonna try to make it smaller and smaller and use less and less of my shoulder to get that moving and more and more of my wrist, okay? This is also a good guard. If I were, uh, for some reason, fighting with something, whether they're like nunchucks or they are nunchucks, all right, this is gonna be the guard that I have, all right? Because I wanna keep these things moving. Try to keep it unpredictable, all right? I might do two circles on one side, just kind of randomly, okay? Uh, but that brings us to our strikes. So the strikes with a nunchuck kind of are, uh, there's a technique to it. The technique is go as fast as you can, three quarters of the way, and then you're gonna basically take all the force out of your arm and be like a dead arm at the, in the last second. Now I'm not saying let go, don't let go. Okay. What I'm saying is don't put any force in it past your target. Here's what I mean by that. When I swing my nunchuck, I kind of want the last quarter, right? I don't want there to be any force in my arm. I kind of like a dead arm, right? So when it comes through, I'm going to stop pushing, stop pushing, right? So that as I'm pushing or as I'm swinging through the, the end of the nunchuck isn't striking me. It's stopping more or less, okay? So I'm taking all of the momentum away from it by starting to pull back. Now, if I pull back too fast, right, that's when you start hitting yourself anyway, and smashing your fingers. So you're gonna stop and then come back, right? So you, it's a it's a slowdown. Um, so when I'm doing this, I can come down. I can come down and then cross, like I'm making a big figure eight, right? So I got my ax. If I'm hitting the bag, I'm gonna drive it through, right? I don't wanna just hit it a little bit because it'll bounce off, right? I wanna strike through, okay? So I'm gonna do that. Down, down. And you want that, you wanna hear that whoosh sound. Right, that's how you know you've got good power to it. Now it's easy to do with these. If I'm doing it with my belt trucks, it's even easier because there's more surface area. Right, and even if I'm doing it with uh, my wooden ones, right, it gets a little higher pitch. But you want to hear that sound, okay? So we've got our downward ones. We also have our sideways ones. Across and across. Across and across. Now when I'm doing this, when I come back, I'm bringing my side or my uh, nunchucks to the outside of my side here. The outside of my shoulder, it's gonna touch my bicep. Um, or if you have enough force like I do, I tend to keep it away a little bit because it's gonna throw its own circle in there. Um, which is why I said, get used to these, right? Right, because I can put that circle in there and I'm back in my guard. Okay, so practice side, side. I can practice down, down, and I can practice up and down, right? So I can come straight down and straight up. Again, if I'm coming straight up, it's even more important that I put this nunchuck on the outside of my, my shoulder here, right? Not the top where my collarbone is, but the outside here, right? Because that way it pokes up under my arm and it doesn't hit me in the back, okay? So, down, up, down, up, right? You're hitting somebody in the crown of the head and then the jaw, so you gotta keep it uh, fast and fast. Now this one, 
It's really hard to slow down at the end, which is why you want to stick around your arm. Because that way, this tends to hurt, right? So we want it to stick up under our arm so that even when we swing all the way through that uppercut and we don't have time to slow it down, it's not hurting us. Uh, the last two are going to be our up diagonals. Up, 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 up. All right, I just try to keep this hand out of the way. It's going to come straight up and the same thing. I'm going to cut it off at the end, put it back on my hip, cut it up at the end. Right, so from the, from here, from this chamber, I can come across, I can come up, right? I could come at a downward angle if I was trying to hit the legs, right? For these, when I'm doing my open hand strikes, I want to aim for big muscles, okay? Big muscles are going to do less uh, actual damage, but they're going to take more of the fight out of somebody, okay? So I'm aiming for like the quad and the uh, hamstring. I'm aiming for uh, the lower abs or the front of the abs, right? I'm aiming for the uh, bicep and tricep. Big muscles full of oxygen that are going to hurt. And then every time you try to activate those muscles, like to throw a punch, to throw a kick, to step over, they're gonna feel that, okay? Uh, unfortunately, because there's this flexi bit in the middle, I don't get to transition all my torque through it. Here's what I mean by that. If I take my nunchuck and I swing through, right, I'm pulling here and it's transferring a lot of that, but the, the defining factor of how much this string flies is how fast it's moving. Whereas if I do this with a bow, the defining factor, this is step, is how much I'm pushing and pulling with both my hands. So even if I just put the bow here, I can still generate enough in a quick motion to get it to move. I can't do that with a nunchuck, okay? That gives me a bit of a limitation in the striking ability for this weapon. It gets mitigated by the fact that I can use it to tie things up. I can wrap it around people, right? I can wrap it around the forearm and do kicks. Um, I can block and trap, and I can do this nice figure four thing um, that really, really hurts and cuts off circulation and does all kinds of nasty things. So there are other advantages to this rather than, you know, just walking around with the bow, but there are limitations too. All right, so uh, the last thing we're going to work on open hand is just a little bit of some uh, skills here. So... If you watch the guys like the, the XMA guys and the, the show off guys and uh, for some reason Taekwondo a lot too, um, they do all kinds of like fancy circles and they'll get a second pair of nunchucks out and then you're doing, you know, two hand stuff where you're flipping it all over the place and going really, really fast. And that all looks cool, you know, but understand that there's no, um, function to that. If I can spin my um, my nunchucks faster, right, in my guard, that's not helping me, right? I don't need it to be any faster than this because I need my brain to be able to say, okay, go now, right? If I'm going a million miles per second, I might time that wrong and then my, my nunchucks are not in the position I want it to be. Um, it looks really cool. I'll give you that. And it takes even more hand-eye coordination to do some of that stuff. Perfect, right? I'm not saying it's a worthless thing. I'm just saying that if you want to use, learn how to use this as a weapon, that's not going to help you, okay? If you want to use this as a hand-eye coordination training tool, do all that stuff, all right? That stuff's super great for that stuff. Um, but if I'm watching you flip that thing around and we're fighting each other, I'm going to put my arm in the middle of it and tie it up on me, let it happen, and then just kick you because, um, you know, there's no, there's no force behind any of that. It's just raw speed. And most of those things are made out of like fiberglass or something that's like super light. So it, the damage is even more mitigated. The only reason these things cause real damage in the first place is because they're made out of wood, right? Th these things are oak, all right? And they're, they're pretty solid. 
I whack somebody or I whack my <laughs> backward. Uh, if I whack myself or I whack somebody with these things, it's gonna do real da uh, damage. All right. So, but however, there are some skills that we really do want to learn. Okay, and some of those are transitions. Nunchucks are a two-handed weapon. Right, so we can do the easy ones where we go figure eight, figure eight, catch, figure eight, figure eight, catch. Right, you can do some of the harder ones. Uh, this one's my favorite because it's probably the most useful. If you're going to do this swing up like you're thinking about uppercutting somebody in the jaw where it comes out underneath, and all I'm going to do is touch it with my hand. So it's going to go touch, touch. And then I'm going to catch it. I'm going to let go with my top hand. Now I've got it in my other hand. So I do it on the other side. Touch. Touch. Switch. Right? So you're going to build that muscle memory of going backwards. Right? So that I can figure out where my hands need to be to go either direction. Right? So now if I strike... Right? I can come back to this. This is another form of a guard. I'm ready to go. If I gotta pop it out, I can pop it out, right? If I gotta pop it up here, I can pop it up here. Right? If I'm just punching with one side or I'm coming out with a black, right? I got my open hand blacks, just like a bow. Um, then I need to be able to transition to that. The harder one of those is going backwards. So coming up under my arm and this way. Now these, this is going to sound funny, but once you kind of get it with your foam ones, my suggestion is switch to something hard as fast as possible. Here's why. This really hurts when it hits you in the back of the head. And because it really hurts, you're not going to try to put it over your shoulder this way. You're going to put it over your arm this way. All right. That fear of smashing yourself in the back of the head is going to get you into a better position to do these, okay? Because I don't want this going over my shoulder. A lot of people, I'm not gonna do it with these because I really don't wanna smash myself, but if I do it with my uh, my rope trucks here, right? So I can do the same thing here. If I do it this way and I put it all the way up under my armpit, right? Nine times out of 10, I'm gonna smash myself in the head. That's never gonna make it. I wanna go under my arm, right? So if I got my rope trucks, just kind of like loops over. So with that being said, I do it out here and it comes under my arm and I don't have to worry about hitting myself in the back of the head, right? And that why, that's why if you switch those wood ones, you get so nervous about hitting yourself in the back of the head that it actually helps you make sure that you put it under your arm. Also, it really does hurt if you smash yourself in the back of the head, so be careful. Don't hit yourself on purpose. All right, the last one is just the behind the back, right? This was uh, one you see a lot in the movies. I don't know why, right? Sometimes it helps. I always thought that the arm ones worked better because I could, you know, kind of fake whether it comes down and across it this way or up or across with this hand. or just coming out with two hands um, and doing something together. Uh, but, you know, it's another one, it's quick, it's simple. I can still do both hands, right? You don't necessarily know which way it's coming from. Uh, the last one to practice is around the head. Right now, the trick to this one is, it has to come in a straight line this way. If you come up, it will hit you in the shoulder and you'll never be able to catch it with the other hand, right? So if I put it out straight and come across, it'll come right around my neck where I need it to be, right? And that way I can come across this way, I can come across this way, right? Or I can just let them sit. Or if I've got two hands or one hand that I can't use, right? I can come across, right? I don't know why you let go of it, but fun things to practice sometimes, okay? So that one, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put, basically I put my hand on my side of my face, I swing it around this way, and it should come right here to the side of my neck. Uh, the, 
The more advanced one is to bring it around the side, but so that it goes straight. So it kind of needs to spiral up like a screw, um, threads on a screw, rather than just up like this. Okay, so it comes around this way, and then it's right here. Okay, so I can come around and around. Okay, so these are nunchucks. Um, next week we're going to use these some more, so if you made a pair, um, keep them around, or at least remember how you made them so that you can do it again quick. Um, if you don't have a pair of these, it's super easy. And as I said, so one of the cool things about nunchucks is it trains you for flexible weapons. Now, it can go as far as having like a three-sectional staff, which is basically, uh, if you've never seen one, uh, three collie sticks um, tied together by two chains. So it's like this, but longer, all right? So each, each chunk would be, you know, about this long, but the whole purpose of it is to be super flexible. Uh, it's a very difficult weapon to figure out, um, but it's very potent, very powerful. Now, as I said, when I, if I'm, you know, the, the nunchuck itself is probably not gonna be the weapon that I find myself using. But if I improvise a weapon, um, then, you know, sometimes I just have to approximate it to whatever I am used to using. If I find myself out in the street and I found a stick on the ground, okay, then I get to use it like a bow. If it's a short stick, maybe I use it like a scythe. If it's got a notch in it, maybe it's definitely a scythe. Uh, you know, a ladder rung, right? Or just a stick off a tree where it's got this piece sticking out. Maybe it just turned into my newest tong foot. Um, you know, a jump rope. You know, you can do real damage with the jump rope just by swinging it around, right? If I use the, the plastic end here, like it's a nunchuck, right? I can adjust my range and I can swing it and it's gonna be using the same set of skills as a nunchuck would, right? Minus the fact that I probably have to be holding on to the other half of it. All right, so it's going to use the same techniques, the same motions, right and the same focus right the harder i swing this the more likely i am to smash myself in the back you can hear it luckily this thing's plastic so it doesn't hurt too much right but that's all um an improvised weapon is is just picking up something and having something close to it uh it could be a string stapled to uh, a stick that you're swinging around it could be uh you know, a, a piece of construction uh, debris. It could be, you know, literally anything. It could just be like a, an air truck at the end of an air hose where you've got that nice heavy part on the end of a, like an air hose or something. And so you're swinging that around. I can't tell you what you're gonna find. Uh, power cord, honestly. You get the, uh, a power cord with the plug end of it and you swish that around real fast, you're gonna smash that, it's gonna suck for somebody, okay? Um, but not, so nunchucks themselves, are not gonna be super useful to you, okay? By itself, it just teaches you some basics. However, it teaches you how to use an improvised weapon, a number of them on the street, just like a bow does, um, and it teaches you some hand-eye coordination, okay? So if you're younger, it's gonna help you out quite a bit too, um, being able to watch things with your eyes and get your hands where they need to be. Um, with that, that's what I got for class today. Just a couple quick announcements. Uh, if you're here for uh, our YouTube public viewers, I appreciate you guys stopping in. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get our videos. Right now during quarantine, we're making four videos a week, um, Monday through Thursday, and I'm kicking them out. Uh, and that's so that if uh, you got a student who, you know, their normal dojo isn't training right now because of quarantine, or they're looking for some extra practice, or uh, maybe they've never been, they've never done karate before, but they want to get into it. They want to see what it's about. You know, you guys are welcome to join us. So I appreciate that. Um, also for you guys, we have a uh, Patreon account set up um, for people who like what we're doing, want to help support us. There's a couple different tiers. One of them even lets you join in with our regular uh, Shiagi-Do martial arts students uh, to join into our Zoom classes and our uh, stuff like that. And even some special Patreon only kind of uh, resources um, that become available. To our regular Shiagi Do martial arts students, just a couple announcements for you guys. Make sure you guys show up to our Zoom class on Friday. 
Sensei Kelly Sears going to be there. She's our eighth degree black belt friend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we've got our avatar challenge workout is coming to a close. If you guys have been doing it along with me, good for you. Make sure you get those, uh, get your pictures of your avatar to me when you're done with them. Okay. So at the end of the month, what I want to do is have as many as we can get up on, on Facebook. So if you send them to me in a text message, an email or whatever, uh, if you've been doing it, I want to get a bunch of them up there. Um, and lastly, t-shirt orders for our summer t-shirt are due by, uh, Thursday the 22nd, because I'm going to do the ordering, um, just so I can get all this stuff that we need to have, um, by June. So when it starts getting warm, you guys can practice in your house and your karate t-shirts instead of your geese. It'll help you out a little bit. All right. Uh, other than that, I got nothing. You guys are awesome. Keep getting after it. You guys are dismissed. Us.